few um, tuning notes to tune up with before we get started. I'm going to start with my high E. Second string B. Third string G. Fourth string D. string A and last string E feel free to go over this part until you get completely in tune Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come up with some with some left and right hand drills that you can start with right away to start building up your muscles and start giving you some control so that we can hopefully get to a point where we can play some songs. So the first thing I'm going to teach you is a left hand exercise. And the purpose of this, hand, this exercise is to teach you the proper way to hold the guitar and also it stretch, helps stretch your muscles and get you used to using your fingers in a different way than you're used to at this point. So the first thing I want to talk about is I want to talk about the proper way that your left hand needs to hold on to the guitar. So the first thing is your thumb. The pad of your thumb needs to go to the back of the guitar, about halfway down. Let's see if I can show the way my thumb is. So, about halfway down your guitar, that's where it should be. Um, also, this part of your hand should never touch the guitar. So, my thumb is on the back, my fingers come around, if you notice right here, I've got a lot of space in there. That's very important to have a lot of space in between your hand because this can never happen. If you have your hand on the guitar like this, all of a sudden you can't stretch. It just basically keeps you from being able to, to stretch. So what we need to do, thumb towards the back, make sure that you have good space here. So we're going to be watching that while we do this next drill. This is, next drill is what I call a chromatic exercise. <clears throat> chromatic meaning every note. There's, you can just play. So what we're doing is we're taking, <clears throat> excuse me, we're taking our first finger, we're putting it on the sixth string, which is the big string, and we're going to put it at the first fret. We're going to play a note. Then we are going to take our second finger and we're going to put it on the second fret. Notice my first finger still stays down the whole time. That's very important. This is the whole reason we're doing this is so that we can practice stretching our fingers. So remember, we're not playing, we're not doing this and letting that finger pop up. What we're doing is we're going one, two, then we're going to keep going. We're going to go three on the third fret and then pinky on the fourth fret. So when you get finished, all four of your fingers should be down. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to get four beats in between each note. So it'll be like this. One, two, That's how we're going to do and eat we're going to do each string all the way down to your first string so when we get to this note right here we can all stop okay let's all start together so it's okay to start with your first finger down make sure that you've got space in between your fingers and the guitar make sure that your thumb the flat part of it is against the, the back of the guitar okay so here we go when I'm watching you, I'll be looking for that your hand's in a good position. So, 
it's important to start now with good habits. So that, so, chromatic exercise, four beats in between each note. One, two, one, two, ready, go. down. Don't let them pop up. If you get to your third finger and you can't get your pinky, it probably means your left hand's in the bad position. Next string. Third string. That's your left hand drill, and by now your, your fingers, if you haven't played guitar before, they're probably feeling pretty stretched out at this point. So at this point, we're going to give it a rest. We're going to let this hand rest. We're just going to put it down here somewhere, and what we're going to work on now is we're going to work on our right hand. Now, with our right hand, we've got two directions we can go. We can, we can play notes down, which starting at the top of the string and actually pushing down with your hand like that. And what I'm doing is I'm letting my pick rest on this string that I'm fixing to play. That's what you call planting. So I'm planting the pick just for a second, and then I'm pushing through. Instead of just swiping at it like this. I'm letting my pick rest on where I'm aiming. Okay? Also, what's happening with my hand, I'm, it's all coming from the wrist. It's just like I'm shaking hands with someone. So, it's important to have that good pick placement to where when you rest your hands like this that your pick is laying right on top of that string. So we're going to start with quarter notes and from your elementary school uh, music you can probably remember we said ta 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 when we did quarter notes right? I'm not going to make you do that but every time you see a quarter note you're going to play down. That's one note per beat so we're going to go one Okay, let's all do that together. One, two, ready, first string, and. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to start this right hand drill and we're going to do all the way up. So we're going to go. Then we're going to go to the next string. Then we're going to go all the way to the top string, and when we get to the top string, we're going to come back down. So we're going all the way up and back down with four quarter notes on each string. Okay? So, everyone together. Here we go. One, two, down, play. One, two, three, four, next string. One, two, three, four, next string. Now, when we're finished with quarter notes, what we're going to do is we're going to move on to eighth notes. And if you remember from your music classes, what I talked about, we I always called these TTs. Yeah, I know, you're laughing. But TTs, 
or eighth note. So I'm not ever going to make you say TT again unless... I don't know why I would make you say TT again. But what we're going to do is we're going to go one and, two and. Notice on the second note of the eighth note I'm picking up. So I'm going one and, two. I'm still planting. I'm starting here. I'm going down and then right back up with it. So we're going to go one and, two and, three and, four and. Now, it is completely okay for you to watch your hand. And in fact, I want you to be watching your hand, even though I'm looking up because I'm talking to you right now on video. But w when you're playing, it's completely okay for you to watch this hand. Okay, don't get to where you're looking up because right now you need to be focusing on making sure your pick's in the right place and that you're playing the right thing. So, we're going to go down, up, down, up, and we're just going to do four eighth notes. So, we're going down, up, down, up, next string. Then we'll go to the second string all the way back up again. So, let's try this. Ready, go. it actually. Now, I don't expect quarter notes and eighth notes all to be done at the same day. You're going to have to play quarter notes for a while, then you're going to have to go to your eighth notes. Just like this next step. The next step, what you're going to do is you're going to go from, well, first we started with quarter notes, which was one note per beat. Then we went to eighth notes, where we cut that quarter note in half and we made two beats out of it, where we went down, up. Now we're going to go back to that quarter note and we're going to cut it into three pieces, which is going to make a triplet. Triplet's going to go down, up, down. Okay. Once again, you've got to get your eighth notes really good before you're ready to go on to triplets. But this is the next step. So when you get triplets, you're going to go down, up, down. So it's triplet. Triple it. Down, up, down, down, up, down. So, it's really kind of hard to do two triplets at the same time. So what we're going to do is we're going to play triplets on one string each. So we're going to go triple it, next string. Triple it, next string. So, just like on all the other drills, we're going to go up and back down. Just one triplet per string. Okay, here we go. One, two, ready. Go and down, up, down, next string, trip, 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 fifth string. step is going to be to do two triplets on each string. This is a little bit di different because all of a sudden now it, you have to feel that you're playing two downs at the same time, meaning you're going down, up, down, down, up, down. So that's what we're going to be looking for. And I will always be looking to make sure that you're playing your triplets correctly by going down, up, down, down, up, down. Okay? So we're going to do that on, on every string. Down, up, down, down, up, down, next string. Down, up, down, down, up, down. Okay, that's
that's how it's going to go all the way up and back down, just like what we've done on all the other strings. So here we go. One, two, triple, let go, a let. So at this point, we have our right hand drills, our left hand drills. We've been working with each hand separately. Now we're going to do something that puts both of them together, and we're going to learn a song that I'm sure that everybody in this room knows, um, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. I use Twinkle Twinkle Little Star to help start putting all these things that we've been talking about up to this point together. So Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, really easy little song. It repeats a lot. That's another thing that's really great about it. But we're going to start out, and we're going to start out with it all being quarter notes. And the key to the first four notes or so is to take your third finger, put it on second string, one, two, third fret, one, two, three. Now, remember, while you're playing, you've got to have this space in there. Don't let your hand do this, and don't start using your... Um, first finger on this because right at now our rule is going to be whatever note I'm sorry whatever fret your note is on that's what finger you're going to use so if it's out if there's a note that we're playing on the first fret you're going to use your first finger if there's a note on the second fret you're going to use your second finger if there's a note on the third fret you're going to use your third finger and it'll be a little bit before we use our pinky because most everything on this song is going to be in the first three frets. So just remember if it's we're starting out third finger, third fret, second string. And we're not going to play that note first. We're going to play the note above it. We're going to play the third string open. When I say open, I mean it doesn't have any fingers on it at all. So at this point we're going to play the third string by itself. Answer back. Very good. Now we're going to play that note that we've already got fretted. So we're going to play the second string. Now if it doesn't sound like that, if it sounds like this, that probably means that you're not pushing down hard enough. So what you need to do, use your thumb that's back here to squeeze a little bit harder until you get that. Then go on back to the first note, which is third string open. You're going to play third string then 2nd string, 3rd fret. Now, leaving that finger there because we're going to come back to it here in a minute. So, you're going to play 1st string open. Remember, open means no fingers. So, 1st string open. Now, if you're playing this and you hear this, that means that your 3rd finger is laying over on it and you need to go more with the tip of your finger. I, I'm should have said that before now, but your tip of the finger has to be what's covering the note. It should not be the pad, which is this flat part. If you do that, you get this. So use the very tip of your finger. Okay, then you're going to come back. So let, let me get it up to speed. So we start out third string open twice. Second string, third fret, third finger, twice. Leave it down, we're coming back. First string open, twice, and then back to second string, third fret. So it's 
That's the first four notes, so it should sound like this. We'll go really slow. Now all these are quarter notes, so everything that I'm playing so far is going to be down, 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 all the way through. No ups at this point. Okay, so that's the first part we have. Now the second part, we're going to use our first finger. We're going to put our first finger on the second string, first fret, and we're going to play that note. Go ahead and answer back. Very good. Then you're going to play that note open. So putting that together, the second part starts like this. Second string, first fret. Second string open. Okay. Then the next bit, you're going to use your second finger on the third string, second fret. Third string, second fret. Good. Remember, use the tip of your finger. Don't use the pad or you're, it's going to sound like that. So, third string, second fret, you're going to play that. Go ahead and play it. Good. Then you're going to play it open. So, you're going to play first string, I, I'm sorry, first finger, second string, first fret, open, then third string, second fret, open, okay, take these a little at a time, so I'm going to play it real slow to get Let's play all of what we've done first. So take your third finger, put it on second string, third fret, and let's start from the beginning. Da, da. We're gonna go really, really slow. Ba, ba. Ready? This next part it repeats twice. So we're gonna we're gonna go back to that note that we started on, which is second string, third fret, and then after that we're going to go to second string first fret. So we're gonna go then. This is where that chromatic exercise that we learned at the first helps you because this is helping you stretch your fingers. If you haven't been doing your chromatic exercise, your fingers are not going to want to stretch from third to first. So you're going to go on the second string, you're going to go third, fret, first, fret, then open. And then the last note is going to be third string, second fret. Okay, so we're going to go all on second string. The first, well, the first three notes are going to be on the second string. So you're going to go third fret, first fret, open. Now third string, second fret. Remember, use your second finger. There, I've seen people um, all the time using their first finger there. You don't want to do that. You want to keep your second finger on there. It'll make it easier for you in the long run. So do that again, all of us together. One. Two, ready, go. Now, after you get that part, you're going to learn to play it twice because in the song, that's what happens. We go. seen Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, you'll know it ends the exact same way that it starts. So we started out doing this. Now 
the second part we just did, which is third fret, first fret, open, third string, second fret. Doing that again. Now it starts all the way over back at the first. Put your third finger down. First string open. Now that you've gotten through Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, we're going to start putting to use the right hand techniques that we have been doing every day. Remember, we started out with quarter notes, then we went to eighth notes, which were the down, up, down, up. So, each note in Twinkle Twinkle Little Star is played twice. It's two quarter notes. So we start out going quarter, quarter note, two quarter notes, right? Now if we take each one of those quarter notes and we split them into half, we've got four eighth notes. So remember, eighth notes, we go down, up, down, up, right? So we're going, here's eighth notes, so it's going to go down, up, 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 down, up. Down, up. So, your first step is to play twinkle twinkle in quarter notes, then start using our right hand exercises that we've been learning to do this. Our next, trip, our next step is going to be triplets. So remember, triplets are kind of tricky They're going because it's not just down up, down up, down up. You've got to go triplet and it's down up, down. So we have two quarter notes for each note. We're going to do two triplets for each note. So we're going triple, triple, Make sure that your picking stays the same, or this is going to be really hard. So just take it one note at a time, and we're going to go. So, now that we've got our first song and we're starting to put our hands together, now we need to expand more. Twinkle Twinkle was really good, and it's really good to um, start using all these rhythms and start getting your right hand trained. But, we haven't been using our left hand to its fullest capability. We've been on, mainly on three strings, and that's okay. But now we need to work on our first scale. Now, I'll bet you that in your life somewhere, you've heard this. 
That is C major scale. Whether you knew what it was or not, that's what we're going to learn right now. So I want to review just for a second the our our finger rule. Remember, whatever fret the note is on, that's what finger you're going to use. So if we're talking about something on the third fret, you automatically assume that you're going to be playing that with your third finger. Don't get in a habit of using your second finger on third fret. That puts your hand all out of position to where when you have to reach the first fret, you've got your second finger down here and then you have to make these really weird things with your fingers. So use the rules and do it right the first time and don't worry about if your third finger doesn't feel as strong as your second finger, use this use the same fingering rules because what's going to end up happening is you'll want to use one finger for everything. You'll be going We don't want that. We want to use all these fingers. It's a good thing. Okay? So starting on fifth string, which is the second to the biggest string on the third fret, what finger? Third finger. That's right. So you're going to use your third finger. You're going to play that note once. Your second note is going to be fourth string, the next string down, open. Which, remember, open means no fingers. So we, we've got open. Now, on the fourth string, we're going to play second finger, second fret, fourth string. So we've got three notes right there. The fourth string is going to, I mean, I'm sorry, the fourth note is going to go up to the third fret. So you got, so remember in our chromatic exercise we've been doing, the E's there, don't worry about lifting E up, just put your third finger down. See, all these drills that we're doing help us to get to the next step. So we start off fifth string, third fret, Fourth string open. Fourth string second fret. Fourth string third fret. Very good. Now the next note is going to be third string open. So we have Remember, if you're getting this on, on this note, that means that your third finger is laying over or you're using the pad of your finger, okay? So make sure that that note comes out clear. So we're going to go fifth string, third fret, fourth string open, fourth string, second fret, fourth string, third fret, third string open, next note, third string, second fret. two notes we've got second string open and then we're going to end with our first fret second string so I'm going to go through this one note at a time and I'll cue you what the next note's going to be so we're going to start with fifth string third fret here we go get ready fourth string open fourth string second fret Fourth string, third fret. Third string, open. Third string, second fret. Second string, open. Second string, first fret. Okay, very good. So, at this point, that needs to be something that you practice until it gets about like this. Playing quarter notes all the way through. Now, when you get it really good, then you can come backwards with it. You can start at this note and go 2nd string, 1st fret, 2nd string, open, 3rd string, 2nd fret, 
third string open. Fourth string, third fret. Fourth string, second fret. Fourth string open. And fifth string, third fret. So eventually what you'll need to do is go up. Play that note again and come back down. Play that note again and go up. Play that note again and go down. All down strokes at this point because we're still playing quarter notes. Okay? Now, after you do this for a while, remember these these exercises I'm giving you are for a long period of time. You learn one step before you go to the next step. I don't expect you to come in and be able to do this in triplets tomorrow. So make sure that you get your C scale going one direction, then get it to where it's coming back, and then play them going back and forth. Then you can move on to this next step, which is going to be eighth notes. So we're going to play down up on each note. So we're going to go... Very good. When you get that, then it's time for triplets. This this is how you know you're getting good when you can go. So, at this point, we've been working on single notes. We've been working on our scales. We've been working on twinkle, twinkle, learning the different rhythms and technique and all of these things. And at this point, we've been working on playing one note at a time for melodies. We've been playing... Guitar has the ability to be able to play melodies and also be accompaniment. What that means is you're playing chords back behind the melody as a way to support the melody to where instead of just hearing you hear so what we need to do is we need to learn some chords the first chord I'm going to show you is G um, so your first finger is going to go on 2nd fret, 5th string. Now I know I've said at this point that our rules are never play your first finger on the 2nd fret. That's in playing melodies. This is different. This is playing chords, which we're going to need to use all of our fingers. And you'll see why we have to use our first finger there at this time. So, once you take your first finger, put it on 5th string, 2nd fret. Now you're going to take your middle finger, and at the same time, leave this finger down, and you're going to put your middle finger on the 3rd fret 6th string. Now, things have to happen. You, once again, I'm going to review you a little bit. You need to use the very, very tips of your finger, right under your fingernail. Because if you use too much of the pad, you get this sound. Uh, right? So, take the first finger, the very tip, then your second finger. Very, very tip. Then you're going to take this third finger. And this is where it gets a little tricky. And that's why you have to have your hand position in the correct manner, right? Don't let your hand do this or you won't be able to stretch. So, you're going to put your third finger on first string, third fret. So, if you can't stretch there, it's probably because your hand is too close to the guitar, okay? So, Start over again, take your thumb, put it where it's supposed to be, back behind. Make sure you've got plenty of space the whole time, okay? Then you're going to put, so you've got first finger going to be on 
fifth fret, I'm sorry, fifth string, second fret, go and take your middle finger, you're going to put it on sixth string, third fret, and then your third finger is going to come all the way over. Remember, we're using the tips of our fingers because we want to be able to hear every note. And I'd like for you guys to do that with me right now. We're going to play one note at a time. This is a term that we call arpeggiating. Arpeggiating meaning broken chord. We're going to take the chord and we're going to play one note at a time. And this is basically to check and make sure, see what we need to work on. So, if you're playing this top string, for instance, and it's buzzing, that probably means that you're not pushing it hard enough. So you need to push that a little bit harder. Now, if you're having a buzz on your, on your fifth string, it'd be one of two things. One, you may not be pushing hard enough with your first finger. The other thing that could be happening is if you're not using the tip of your finger on, with your middle finger, it may be laying over stopping that string. So, one way of checking it is lift up your middle finger and play it. And if you're able to play it, then you know that it's your middle finger. So, let's, so those are two common problems with the G. So, let's start again. We're going to play six, five, four, three, two, one. Now, if any of these open strings here are buzzing, it's because your fingers are not arched enough. So you need to make sure that your fingers are arched up really good, making arches to where they're not laying over on the, on the guitar like this. So let's try it one more time. That's your G. Very good. Now, what I usually do in class is I, I make everybody take their hand, put it, down on their leg and then I give them four seconds to see if they can make G again. So I want everybody to take your hands off the guitar and when I say go I'm going to count the four and you've got four to go one, two, three. So remember just take it one finger at a time. Let's try it. Ready, go and one, two, three, four and strong. Very good. Let's do it again. Put your hand down. Ready? Go. And one, two, three, four, and strong. Very good. Let's move on to our next chord. Our next chord that we're going to do is C chord. And where we're going to start with our C chord is we're going to start with our first finger. And it's going to be on second string, first fret. So I want everybody to take your first finger, put the tip of it. Remember, we're only using tips. Make sure that your hand placement is, I get a lot of this. You can't have that happening with, with the C chord or it, you won't be able to make your first string open, which we'll talk about in just a second. So make sure that you've got plenty of space, okay? Now, we're going to take our second finger and we're going to put it on the fourth string second fret and then you're going to take your third finger and you're going to put it on the fifth string third fret so things that i'll be looking for is making sure that your hands far away and i can check it by one thing playing that first string if i hear this i know that your hand position's all out of whack okay so what I want you to do is just really focus on it, and now we're going to arpeggiate the chord again. We don't play the top string on the C. On G, we play all the strings, but on C, we don't worry about this top string. We start from the fifth string, and we go four, three, two, one. So you need to practice that C until, until when you arpeggiate, you can hear every string. So when you're hearing these pops, realize that there's two things that you need to check. One is that you're pushing hard enough with the tip of your finger. Second is that your fingers are not laying over on one another. So how you, how you keep them from not laying over on one another, you get a good hand position. And you make sure that your thumb's in the right place and you make sure that that spacing's going good. So I'm going to play five, five, four, three. Let's do the drill that we just did. 
take your hand off. You've got four seconds now to make get your hand back to a C chord. Okay? So ready? Go. And first finger, second finger, third finger, strum. Remember, don't strum the top string. Let's do it again. Ready? Go. First finger, second finger, third finger, strum. Very good. Now that we have two chords, we're going to practice going between our G and our C. Because at this point, you should have practiced your G until every string comes out and practice just making the chord from nothing, right? And then C the same way. You've practiced it until every note's clear and you also did your drill where you practice making it in four seconds. Now we're going to do, we're going to use them both. We're going to go back and forth between C and G. And I'm going to give you eight beats. So we're going to start on G. Let's start G, our first chord. And we're going to strum on the first beat and then we're going to count to eight. So instead of having four seconds, you've really got eight to get to the next chord. I like making things really slow because it gives you plenty of time to think about what you want to do first, second, and third, and so on. So, we're going to take G, strum, going on to C in eight beats. Let me demonstrate. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, back to the G chord. Now you saw me wait until like the last beat before I switched there. It's completely okay for you to take every beat that you can. It's completely okay for you to strum and use the rest of those seven beats to get there. I've been doing this for a while, so, you know, I can switch pretty quick. You will too, in time. But for right now, use all the time I'm giving you. That's why I'm giving you a lot of time is so that you can... So don't sit there and look at that G. Go on, strum it, and get to moving. So, here we go. Our first drill... We're going to go from G, C, back and forth. Eight beats in between. This is what I call playing eights. You'll hear me refer to this in my class a lot. So here we go. One, two, G chord, go. And G, two, three, four, going to the C chord. And one, two, three, four, back to the G. Very good. So, we're starting to put our chords together, and we're going to use these chords to, to, when we learn our third chord, we're going to learn to put these chords together and make a song out of it. So, the next chord that I'm going to teach you is a D major. So, the D major is actually, I think, a little bit easier than C and G, either one. Um, so, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your first finger, you're going to put it on second fret, third string, okay? Then you're going to take your middle finger, put it on first string, second fret, sorry. And then you're going to take your third finger and you're going to put it in the middle of the two, you're going to put it on the third fret, second string. So if you remember, the way that you can remember where the third finger goes, it's your first note that you play on twinkle twinkle. So Go ahead and make that first note a twinkle twinkle and then you're going to take your first finger and you're going to put it on third string, second fret, and then your middle finger is going to go on second fret, first string. Now, G chord we strummed all the strings, C chord we didn't strum the top string. Now on D chord we're not going to strum the top two, we're not going to strum six or five, it's four to one. That's your D. So, that's something to keep in mind while we're doing this. So, start on the fourth string, arpeggiate. One, two, three, four, 
a lot of things that happen. Um, second finger, I mean, I'm sorry, third finger always wants to fall over on the first string. So if you're hearing that first string buzz, check your, uh, your third finger because that, that happens a lot. Remember, this whole time, I'm always leaving that space in there. I'm going to say that a lot because I, throughout the years of teaching, I've seen a lot of kids forget about that and they go to doing things like this. And it makes their job a lot harder. So if you learn to do it right the first time, you don't have to think about it anymore. So you'll hear me keep saying this through the rest. But remember, thumb on the back, plenty of space in between your hand, and arch your fingers using the tips. Okay? So, let's start page 8 one more time. You need to keep trying that until you get that perfect. Now, when our next step, just like on the other chords, when you get it perfect and you can arpeggiate it and it's coming out sounding really nice, then we're going to work on speeding up and making that chord happen. So, taking our hands off, I'm giving you four seconds to find it. Ready, go. And one, two, three, four, and strum. Do it again one more time. One, oh, I guess I better tell you to go. Ready, go. And one, two, three, four four, and strum. Okay, now we're going to take our three chords. We've got G, we've got C, and we've got D. We're going to start putting them together in eights, like we, the last thing we did with G and C. We're going to put them together with eights. So we're going to go eight beats. We're going to go G, C, D, C. Now remember, I'm giving you plenty of time to think about switching in between. So we're going G, C, D, C. Okay? So, eight beats in between each chord. Here we go. One, two, eight beats. G and two, three, four, going to the C. Four and two, three, four, going to the D chord. Two, three, four, back to the C chord. Back to G. So we have three chords now. We're learning to switch between them in eights, going G, C, D, C. Now that we're doing it in eights, once you get really good at that, then you step up to what I call fours, which are going to go four beats. So it'll be one, two, C chord, one. So, let's try that. One, two, one, two, ready, go. And two, C chord, two, the D chord, two, the C chord, and back to G. Two, the C chord. doing a little bit more harder stuff with this, with this right hand. So when we play this, we're going to go two big strums on G, like this. Answer back. Your turn strum. Very good. Now we're going to go three quick strums on C. 
answer back. Ready, go. Very good. Then we're going to do two big strums on D. Your turn. Ready, play. Good. And answer back to C. You're going to do three quick strums again. Putting it together, we've got strum, strum, go to C, strum, 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 D, D, C, C, C. So it'll sound like this. That's a song from the 60s called Wild Thing, and I use that song just like I use Twinkle Twinkle. I use it to, to help us learn. It's not only is it a cool song to learn, but it's something recognizable that we can use through all of our chords. So, first thing we're going to do now is we're going to play that back to me. So we're going to go strum, strum, switch, C, 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 D, D, switch. C, C. Let's try it together. And we're going to go a little bit slower just for some of the people that are having a little bit harder time. Here we go. One, two, ready, and go. And switch. So, just like what I've said several times, I don't expect you to jump from learning your G chord to doing Wild Thing all in one day. I mean, this is something that's going to last for several weeks while you're working on your chords. So, take it in steps. First your G, then your C, then your D. And remember, we learn to arpeggiate each chord. they sounded perfect. Then we started switching between in eights first, then when you get eights mastered and you're able to play that every time, then you can go to fours. When you're able to do fours every time, you may, you may run right to fours, you may ha make eights real easy and then go to fours and make fours real easy and then this getting the strums and everything may take a little bit longer. So just don't expect to do it all in one day. I didn't and I know that you won't either. So it's okay. Um, but take it one step at a time. Okay, so we just got finished doing Wild Thing chords in the key of G. at this point as long as once you get to about fours to where you're able to switch in between each chord in fours then it's okay let's go on to a new chord and the next chord I'm going to teach you today is I'm going to teach you an A. A is one of my favorite chords. Um, we're going to take our first finger we're going to put it on third string second fret. Now you're going to take your second finger and you're going to go on the same fret right above that on the fourth string and then you're going to take your third finger and you're going to put it on the second string all all three notes are on the second fret so every bit of this one two three all on the second fret and remember got plenty of space in between my hands that's so things that what you need to do is put the first finger down first then you're going to take put your second finger right over the top of that on the fourth string right above it and then the third finger on the second string go through our steps what's our first step arpeggiating arpeggiate fixing any problems if we've got something if we've got this happening on the the middle string you need to 
maybe push it a little bit closer to the middle because that's getting a little bit closer to the frets. E on the, uh, I'm sorry, on the A chord, we don't play the top E string. We play five to one. When you get that finished, when you're able to do that, then, you're, then we're going to go on to playing Wild Thing in another key. We're going to play Wild Thing in the key of D. So, two of the chords in the key of D you already know from the key of G. So you're going to start with D, which you learned in Wild Thing uh, in the key of G, right? Then the second chord, you actually learn in the key of G because it was it's G, right? So you've got D, G, then we're going to go to A, which is our new chord. Before we do this, I just now remember we need to actually go back a step and we need to practice making our A chord in four seconds. So what I want you to do is I want you to take your hand, put it on your knee, and you're going to get four seconds to make your A chord. So here we go. One, ready, go. And one, two, three, four, and strum. Let's do it again. Ready, go, and one, two, three, four, and strum. One more time. Ready, go, and one, two, three, four, and strum. So these first two chords, I think, are going to be very easy because we've already been playing them. So we're going to go in eights, we're going to go D, then we're going to go to G, then we're going to go to A, which is our new chord, and back to G. Okay? And then back to then. So, we're going to do eights. So, one, two, three, four, going to the G chord. All right, just like that. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. And G. Go we to the G chord. One, two, three, four. Going to the A chord and one, two, three, four. Back to the G chord. Back to D chord. Going to the G chord. Going to the A chord. Going to the G chord. And back to D and stop. That's eights. So, what we're going to do now is once you get that mastered, once you're able to do that perfectly each time, you're ready to go on to four. So we're going to step it up. We're going to go to the G chord. Four beats. Two, three, four, A. Back to G. Okay? So four beats each. Here we go. One, two, D chord. Go. And to the G chord. To the A chord. To the G back on. Get the next chord and get ready. Very good. So, now stepping it up another notch, we're going to add the, the Wild Thing strum. So remember in G, we did two big strums, three quick strums, two big strums, three quick strums. So it's going to go strum, strum, G, It may take, a, you know, you may get to fours really quick and think, man, this is easy. And then this may take you a little bit, okay? So that's okay. 
Don't get discouraged. So we're going to go Wild Thing Strums in the key of D, and I'm going to go a little bit slower. Ready? Go. And G. A. G. Now that we've gotten through the key of D, we're going to learn a new song. We're going to keep on going with this wild thing chord progression thing. So our next chord that we're going to learn is going to be an E chord. E chord is going to start with your first finger, and you're going to put it on the third string, first fret. Okay. Then your middle finger is going to go on fifth string, second fret. And then third string, I mean, third finger is going to go right behind it on the fourth string, second fret. Now, we can, on this E, we can strum every single note. So we're going to start here and we're going to arpeggiate. We're going to go down. Things that happen a lot on the E is people get lazy with their first finger and they let their first finger fall over. And then those last three strings that we don't have any fingers on, they don't come out sometimes. So, remember, I'm not even going to say it anymore. I'm just going to show you my hand, the way it looks. So we're going to go arpeggiated. Very good. So, when you get that mastered, we're going to move in to playing the wild thing chords in the key of A. So, A and D are the next notes we're going to use. So we've got A and then D, which we played those both in the last chord progression that we did. So A, D, and then our new chord, E. Now I'm going to show you some things that will help you get from A to E. Um, one thing that, you, that I always try to do is see if there's any common fingers. So in A and D, we have a common finger. Both of them have their first finger on the third uh, string, second fret. So what we need to do is when we're going from A to D, the first thing we do is we're going to take this middle finger and we're going to put it on the first string, and then we're just going to slide our other finger down. So just remember that there's no sense in lifting all your fingers up. If you've already got one in the right place, use that. That's what I call a pivot note. It allows you, to, or an anchor note. That's what allows you to keep your place. So anytime that we have something like that. Now, so we're going to go from A to D, then we're going to go from E. Now, E and D don't necessarily have an anchor note, but they've got a note that's common on the same string. So E, we have our first finger on the third string, first fret, and on D we have it on third string, second fret. So what we need to do is when we go to E, we're just keeping that finger on the string, but we're sliding it. And that'll help us keep our place. So remember, on A, going to D, we have a common finger. And then you just slide that first finger down to get to E, and then you slide it back up to get back to D. So we're going to go on eights first. Here we go, eight beats. One, two, ready, and go. And A, two, three, Four, going to the D four. Three, four, slide your first finger up to E and two, three, four, slide your first finger back down to D and two. Remember, don't strum the top two on D. Back to A. Keep your common finger.
Now we're going to, once you get that, we're going on to fours. So, B. Strum to the D chord. Strum to the E. So, here we go. One, two, ready, go. And two. strums. Remember, two big ones, three little strums on the next one. Two big strums on the next chord, back to three. So it's Remember, this may take some time. Here we go. One, two, A chords, go, and switch. Next chords we're going to do is the key of E. Okay, so we have E that you've already learned. We have A that you also have already learned. We've got a new chord now. We've got B7. I will explain what B7 actually means in a later time. Just know that B7 sounds a little bit different. It's got a little bit different sound. So, for right now, just know that this is our next chord. B7. B7 is really close to A, and I'll show you what I mean. We, we talk about trying to find common fingers. They don't have any common fingers, but they've got some really close fingers, which means if we take our A chord, what we just learned, and we lift our first finger up, and we take fingers 2 and 3, and we move them up one string each, which means we take our second finger here, we're going to move it up to the fifth string, and we take our third finger here, and we're going to move it up to the third string. Now take this first finger here and put it on the first fret, fifth string. So I have my pick back again. We took some time to develop our right hand and talk about finger picking, um, but we haven't forgot about our pick. and we're, So we've got our pick back again, and at this point, what you've been doing is you've been learning a lot of chords. Um, you've got your G, C, A, B7, E, fill in the blank if I missed any. Um, and that's covering uh, most of your major type chords. What we're going to do at this point is we're going at the, what I tell people the difference between a beginner and the difference between an intermediate player is an intermediate player can take those chords and be able to move them around the neck. So we're going to learn some movable chord forms that are a little bit harder. They take a little bit of time to push down. But once you get them, it, you, you can basically play about any chord you want. So I'm going to start with an F chord, the basic F. And I'll just tell you, this is one of the tougher chords to get because at this point, We've only used about one finger for one string. Well, the F is a little bit harder because you have to be able to hold down two strings at the same time. One and two. On the first fret, you're going to take your first finger. And where I've told you at this point to only use your tip, this is the exception to the rule because now you can't use the tip of your finger on two strings, so you've got to use the pad of your finger, which is a little bit smushier, which means it's a little bit harder to push down. So what I do is I have a little drill that I teach my kids to move up the neck and to have them practice and strengthen their finger. And we call it fingers of pain. It's not quite as bad as the name sounds. But what, what we do, it's kind of like our workout to strengthen our hands. So we start out with holding down two strings at the same time and we arpeggiate them. 
So, I want you to play that back to me. So, try your best, do everything you can to get those two strings down. Now, we're going to, as we play them, we're going to move all the way up the neck until you get to your two dots down here. So, it'll, it'll go like this. Next fret. Next fret. Next fret. So, try that with me. Let's go up the neck one time. One. Two, ready, go, and next fret, next fret, next fret, next fret. And that's just the way that we practice holding down two strings at the same time. Now, we need that to be able to play this F chord. So the trick to the F chord is you have to hold down those first two strings and then also arch up your fingers like the old way that we held down strings to where they don't fall over on that, but at the same time you have to keep this finger flat. So. Once again, I'm going to show you how my hand looks over here making an F chord. I've still got that space in between my hands. That's very important. Even when it... So, don't do this. Still keep your hand out there. We're going to... First thing you're going to do is you're going to arpeggiate those first two notes. Okay? Then you're going to add a note. We're not going to do all three strings at the same time. We're going to add one note at a time. So on this next note, you're going to take your middle finger and you're going to arch it with the tip of your finger while you're holding down these other two. This is tough. Put it on your third string, second fret. And so you've got one, your middle finger arched using the tip of your finger, and then you've got your F chord laying over. Now, just mess with that until you can get all three. Just keep arpeggiating. If you get a dead string, fix it. Figure out how to get all three. Every once in a while, stop, shake your hand out. Now, when you get those three, you're going to put on the final chord, I mean the final note of the chord, and you're going to put your third finger on fourth string, third fret. So, we've got First finger across first two strings on the first fret, third string second fret with our second finger, and then our third finger arpeggiate it until you make it. Now, once you get that, I teach my kids that it's easy to move this up the neck. Once you get it in one spot, you can actually play this chord all the way up the neck, and it makes different chords. So, you got F. After F sharp, I mean after F is F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, and all the way back to E. And it gets tough as you get up there because it's all crammed in. That's something that we do every day is we say F, then we go to F sharp. Now, the key to knowing how to know these notes is you're, we're basically doing the uh, musical alphabet starting at different points. We're starting on the F. Now, what the musical alphabet is, is, is we've talked about it at the beginning of the year, but to refresh your memory, the musical alphabet doesn't go from A to Z like our normal alphabet. The musical alphabet goes from A to G. That's it. It goes from A to G and it starts back over. Now, in between each note, in between your A and your B, you have an A sharp. Every note has a sharp after it, so it, except for two, which is B and E. So think of B, the word B, or it, 
There be no sharps and be and E. I make my students say that all the time. So, what we do is we start on F. So F has a sharp because it's not B or E. Then it goes to the next note in the alphabet is G. Then it has a sharp. Then it goes to A because at the end, after G, there's G sharp and then it starts back over again in A. Then A sharp. On the seventh fret we have B. Now here's where there's no B sharp, so you go straight to C. C sharp. D. D sharp. E. And right there, if we moved up one more, we get back to e, F because there's no F sharp. I mean, I'm sorry, there's no E sharp. So, just remember, no matter where you start in the musical alphabet, there's always a sharp, except for after B and E. So, we have our first movable chord, which, like I've been saying throughout this whole video, it's going to take you some time to get to where you can do this. So, work on it, and what happens a lot of time is, since this is hard, people ignore it and say, ah, I'll just work on something else that's easier. The more that you work on it, the easier it's going to get. So work on this a few minutes each day and get to where you can go all the way up the neck. Now, more movable chords. What we are going to do now is we have this F, and I'm going to show you how to make a minor chord out of this F. So, this is another movable chord. So, you know, you have F. Now, the difference between F major and F minor, F major covers up the first two strings. F minor covers up the first three strings. So, to get ready for it, I'm, I, we're going to do Fingers of Pain again. If you remember Fingers of Pain, we started out with two notes. Now, we're going to do three notes. So now we're strengthening those hands a little bit more to step up to the next plate. So we've got three notes, one, two, three, next fret, and then we slide up one fret, and we're going to go all the way down to the double dots, which is your 12th fret. So let's try it together. Here we go. One, two, ready, go, and next fret. Okay, so that's going to help strengthen your fingers to where you're able to hold down several strings at the same time. That's the idea of what we're doing. So, just like before, take your first finger, lay it over to the first three strings, and then you're going to take your third finger, and you're going to go to the fourth string, third fret, just like an F, and it's going to sound a little bit different. So here's F major got kind of a happy sound. And then here's F minor. It's got kind of a sad, gloomier sound. Okay, so we're going to take our F minor and we're going to move up the musical alphabet. So, just like before, we had F, then F sharp, right? Now we have F minor, then F sharp minor. And every chord is going to have a sharp after it except for two, B and E, right? So we've got F minor, and we're going to move up to F sharp minor, and to G minor, so on and so forth up the neck. So as we go up, I'm going to say the chord name. Here we go, F minor. Ready, go, and F sharp minor. D 
sharp minor, E minor, and then if we moved up, it would go straight to F because there's no E sharp. So at this point, we have our F that we move up and our F minor step we move up, okay? Now we've got some more chords that are going to require us to move across all the frets. Now remember, this is still a one step at a time deal. First you start with the drills that we did on F. Make sure that you can do that till you go all the way up the neck and then you work on your F minor and get it all the way up the neck. Now, to get us through to where we can hold down all the strings, we're going to continue with this fingers of pain idea to where we've been holding down three strings, now we're going to hold down four and we're going to go all the way up the neck. So here's four strings. Here we go. Ready? All the way up the neck. One, two, ready, four strings. Next fret. Next fret. Five strings. Ready? So it should sound like this. Next fret. Let's do it together. Ready? Go. And. six strings. This is the tough one. So, trying all different types of things. What I tell is a little, what I do is I say, stick your finger across all the strings and get about that much of your finger sticking up out of the top. Just, you know, you don't want it to be down here like this. Have the, this allows to get the thicker part of your finger across it. And then what I also say to do is turn it your finger a little bit to where your fingernail is pointing away from you. Don't do it like this to where it's pointing towards you. See how my, my hand's all out of place? Because we're still keeping that thing that I've been t harping on forever, that space in there. We still want that space. So you get your finger and you turn your fingernail away from you a little bit. So my and this is allowed to get in the harder part, the bonier part of your finger. And then we're going to try to go all the way up the neck. This is difficult, but once you get it, everything else is going to be a little bit easier after that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up the neck, fingers of pain, all the way to the 12th fret. Here we go. One, two, ready, go, and... Right. 
right there on that last one, I got a couple of pops and buzzes. So what I would do is I'd go back, try to figure out how to turn my head, just like that. That's how you get it. Your hand should feel like it's about ready to fall off right now. And that's okay. So when you're able to do that, you're ready for the bar chord, which is the big feet that we're all trying to do. And the bar starts out the exact same way the fingers of pain did. You lay your finger across all of it with your hand still in a good position, sticking up a little bit up out of the top. If you look at the top of my finger, it's going a little bit past the guitar. And now what we're going to do is you're going to take your second finger, you're going to put it on the third string, second fret, you're going to take your third finger and you're going to put it on the fifth string, third fret, and then the pinky's going to go right behind it on, let's see if I can show this, pinky's going to go right behind it on the fourth string, third fret, and it's going to sound like this. This is also an F. We have this F, which is a fourth string F. This is the sixth string bar chord F right here. You notice that they sound a lot alike, but one gets the deeper sound because you're able to get the big strings involved. To where this one, we only use the last four strings, right? Now, just like before, our move in the musical alphabet starting on F just like before so we've got F then we're going to go on up to F sharp follow with me then the G then the G sharp then the A then the A sharp then the B C, no B sharp, right? Remember that. Then the D, uh, C sharp, I'm sorry. Then the D. Then the D sharp. Then the E. That one's hard. Um, so, in learning this one chord, you've actually learned 12 different chords because you can move this around to wherever you need it. So if somebody said, hey, play me a G sharp, what you would do is you'd start here and you'd go F, F sharp, G, G sharp. Okay. So, each day we're, we're working on strengthening these fingers where we can hold down several chords at the same time. I think the fingers of pain holding down all the strings with one finger is a lot harder actually than to do the bar chord because you actually get some help from these other fingers. But one thing I wanted to point out is if we take our bar off, if you notice, if you look at this and then move it back a fret, you actually, maybe you can see that that looks exactly like an E. If we look at this E, you see how that looks just like the E? So if we make our F and we lift it up, it looks just like an E. That's really what we're doing with this bar chord. We're taking an E chord and we're moving it up one fret. Now, why do we need the bar? Because if we, we've got our E where we're able to hit all these up and notes, if we move the, the E up without our bar chord, it gets really weird sounds. Not quite what we're looking for. So what happens is it's, it's kind of like we get to pull the top of the guitar down. So what we're doing is we're taking that E and we're moving it up and we're we're go ahead and using it. So we're going E, F, F sharp, and so on. So when I refer to this F chord, I will call it sometimes the E form. And the reason I call it the E form is because it's derived or it looks like the E. And it's made from the E. We're just sliding the E up. Okay? So when I refer to this E, as the, when I refer to this F, I call it the E shape, because it is shaped like an E. So, that's something to remember. Now, if we go on to our E, we may or may not have talked to class at this point, but one way to, to make an E minor chord 
from this original E, if everybody will make your E and follow along with me, if you lift your first finger up, you make an E minor chord. Okay, so if you can make your E minor, I mean your E and E minor by lifting up this finger, if you go back to your F chord, which is the shape, where's that finger at? Right here on the second finger. So if you if you take F and lift up your middle finger, you get F minor. And remember our F minor that we did before. Just like this F was like this F, but it had the bigger bass notes. So as we come up, it's still the same notes move in the same way. We start on F minor, then we move up and it becomes F sharp minor, then it becomes G minor. Follow with me, fourth fret, G sharp minor, A minor, A sharp minor, B minor, C minor, remember, no B sharp, C sharp minor, D minor, D sharp minor, and it's getting really hard to do this, and E minor, okay? So, as you go up, realize now that with these chords right here, you not only learned one chord, you learn 12, well right here, add another 12 on there, because each one of these chords you can make a minor. So if somebody said, make me a A sharp minor, or we're going to play a song and it's got an A sharp minor in it, you could go F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, and then how do you make it minor? You lift the second finger up. So, every day on these bar chords, if you'll start off going fingers of pain two, all the way up the neck, make your F chord, all the way up the neck, fingers of pain three, all the way up the neck, then make it an F minor. Then you do fingers of pain four, all the way up the neck, five, all the way up the neck, six, all the way up the neck, and then you're going to make your F major chord, all the way up the neck, and F minor chord. There's your bar chord. Okay, so um, what we've been working on now is making that step from beginning to intermediate and moving, learning these chords, moving around, knowing how to find them. So, the next step we're going to do is we're going to learn about the blues a little bit. And in order to do this blues progression, which you can, once you learn this, you can learn rock and roll songs from the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, all the way up to today. I still hear people doing this uh, technique all the time and it's a blue shuffle technique and what I'm going to do is is before we do this I want to go back all the way to one of our very first lessons that chromatic exercise and I want us to revisit that and I want us to look at it all on one string again so we're going to go going to get there. So let's all get there and stop and keep your fingers held on the guitar. So we're going to go one, second finger, third finger, fourth finger. Now stop. Now the next step on this, we're going to add a little wrinkle to this because we've been doing this for a while. What we're going to do is we're going to take this pinky now and we're going to 
with the other fingers left down, we're going to stretch that pinky all the way to the fifth fret or to the dot. So we're going one, two, three, four. Now leave your other fingers down, five. We do not want you to lift the finger up. We don't want this, in other words. And slide those other fingers. That's not helping you any. That's not helping you stretch. What you need to do is be able to stretch your pinky out like that. And what that's doing is it's turning you from moving like this to be able to stretch your fingers out like this, which you're going to need for this next drill. So, what we're going to do is we're going to work our way through the strings, going one, two, three, four, five with your pinky. This is going to help us on our next thing. So let's try it together. One, two, one, two, ready, go. And three, four. Next fret. Leave your fingers down. Now the pinky. Now slide up to five with your other fingers. Now go on to the next string. Same drill. Leave your fingers down. Don't let them slide up. Pinky only. Go to the next string. Get that big stretch in there. Good. Go on to the next string. Very good. So that is a monster stretch right there. That is gonna, you're going to, that's going to come in very handy if you do that a little bit each day, helping you get to this next thing, because this next thing we do is going to be a stretch. So we're going to start out making what we refer to in rock and roll or heavy metal as a power chord. So you're going to take your first finger and you're going to put it on third, uh, third fret, Sixth string, okay? I'm not even going to say anything. I'm just going to show it. Um, you're going to then take your third finger and you're going to go down to the fifth string and you're going to go all the way down to that dot, which is the fifth, uh, which is the fifth fret, as the same, okay? So that's that's what we call a power chord. It's two, um, it's two notes only. So, we're going to play those at the exact same time. Now, I don't want to hear this. We're not hitting any of the other strings. We're just only... I just want to hear everybody do that. Play it back. Play it back. Try to make sure you're getting both strings. Don't do this. You can't hear both of them. So we're, we're keeping that. Here's where the stretch comes in. So after we play this on our power chord, we're going to take our pinky and on the fifth on the fifth string, we're going to stretch that pinky all the way down to the next dot. You can go ahead and leave your third finger here because you're going to be coming back to it, back and forth. So we're going rest. Rest, now stretch on up to the dot. That's what it should sound like. Release, 
go back. Now stretch on back up to the dot on the fifth string. Make sure that you're getting both. And back. Now if you look at the stretch that I'm asking you to do, it's not out of the ordinary. We've been doing that same stretch in the last drill that we did. So you're getting, you're used to using your pinky. So this is what's happening. The part of the problem that you're going to have is if you have your hand up here like this, you're never going to be able to stretch down there. So if you drop your hand, get down here, that allows your hand to spread out and use all your hand. So we're going to do two rests in between. So we're going to start with the power chord. Rest, rest, then pinky. Rest back to power chord, then pinky, rest, rest, pinky, you probably need to stop and shake it out at this point. Now, what is the third fret on the sixth string? What note is that? After all the power, after all the um, bar chords we've been doing, you should be able to figure it out because you'll know that your first fret is F, so you've got F, then F sharp, G, right. So this is what I would call a blue shuffle in G. And what's going to happen is eventually we get this sped up. So after you get to where you can do it, you're going to... That's what we were just doing. So instead of rest, rest, it's a very slow way to do this. So, we're going to use this in what's called a, a chord progression, just like we had the Wild Thing chord progression. We've got a very popular chord progression called the 12 Bar Blues. Yeah. Um, so, it's used in about every style of music nowadays. Um, so, the 12 Bar Blues, we're going to take this chord and learn to move it. Not only up down this way, which in this song we won't be moving it on the same string, but what we'll do is we'll drop it down. So what we're going to do is the, the next chord that we need to know after we do G is we're going to drop it down. So we're going to move our first finger to fifth string third fret. We're going to move our third finger to fourth string fifth fret, which is on the dot, and then our pinky is going to go on back up to the dot. And we, after doing G, we should be able to do this pretty well. So, how now we just like when we were strumming and finger picking, we need to know how to count these so that we know how many beats. So, we're playing eighth notes, so we're going one and two and three and four, and, and I want us to rest after four beats. So, we're going to go one and two and three and four and rest, rest, and we're back to G by the way. So, we're moving back up to G, and we're going to go one and two and three and four and rest. Rest, rest, rest. One, and two, and three, and four. Rest, 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 rest. And one, So now that we're doing that, we're going to go, we're going to do the G for four beats, and we're going to rest, and then we're going to drop down to the C for four beats, and we're going to rest. We're going to practice going back and forth between these two things. So we're going to go, rest, drop your fingers down, and rest, back, up to G. your fingers down, back up to G, drop your fingers down. Now one thing to remember, and 
I, I didn't say this before and I should have, is when we're doing the C, the second chord, and the reason it's a C, if you think about your C chord where it's at, wait, you know, you're putting your first finger on that, or your C scale, that's a C note. So, but one thing that I wanted to say was when you go to the C, you don't hit the top string anymore. It's very important that you don't do that. So, like our first lesson that we ever did, we talk about planting. We put our pick down on the top of that fifth string. So, we've done our blues um, G riff, we've done our blues uh, in C riff, and we practice going back and forth. There's one more that we need. And if you remember to your wall thing chord progression, we had G, C, and D. That's right. So to find a D in this, we're actually going to take our C and we're going to go C, C sharp, D. So if we put our first finger on the fifth fret, and then we take our third finger and put it on the next dot down, which is the seventh fret, and then your pinky is going to go all the way down to the next dot. Now this should be a little bit easier if you've got G and C mastered. This is a little bit easier because the frets are a little bit closer together. Um, let's do four beats each on D and let's practice that for a little bit. So we're going to go one and two and three and four and rest, 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 rest again. Rest, 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 rest. Rest, 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 rest. Rest, rest. Rest, rest. Rest, 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 rest. Okay, very good. Now, to practice this a little bit, we're going to practice doing all three chords. We're going to start down here on the fifth fret where we just did D. So remember, when D, you find your fifth string, fifth fret. Remember, 5-5. Five, five. We're going to do D for four beats. We're going to do C for four beats, and then we're going to end up on G. So we're going to do D. Rest to the C chord. Rest back to G chord. Now, to get back to D from, from G, something to remember is we've got to get the fifth string, fifth fret. And if you look at your G chord, on your third finger, your third finger is on fifth string, fifth fret. So when you're going from G to D, the first thing you need to think of is I need to put my first finger where my third finger's at, which is right down here. So use that as a guide. So that's where you're aiming for. So when you're playing G, you're going to move your finger back down to that. See that? Then we're going to go to C. G and we're going to loop that around and we're going to do four beats in between each chord. So here we go, starting on D. So find your first finger, fifth string, fifth fret, and do your power chord. Remember, we're not hitting the top string on D, just like C. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. And D, two, three, four, rest down to C, two frets, and rest up to G, one string, and look at your third finger, that's where first finger goes. Then down to C chord, move up to G chord, it's already sound like a song, right? One, put your first Doing those two drills, going back and forth between G and C, and then doing that little drill that we just did, we've got everything that we need to do the famous chord progression of the 12-bar blues. So, the first four bars are all going to be G, um, which is our first chord. So, we've been counting in four beats, so we've been going one, two, three, four, but 
but now we're going to do that four times. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now, after the fourth beat, you're going to play the C. And you're going to do four beats two times. So you've got four bars of G, and then we're going to play two bars of C. And it's going to sound like this. So we're going to go one, two, three, four. Second bar, three, four. Third bar, three, fourth bar, two, three to C. And one, two, three, just one more bar. One, two, three, four. Now we're going to go back up to G for another two bars. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, here's where well, the last drill we did comes in. We're going to go down to D. And remember, I'm going to remind you, our third finger, that's where our first finger is going to go. So take your first finger, put it there, and we're going to do that same drill. D for four. C for four beats. And then G. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and stop right there. So here's what we've got so far. We've got the 12 bar blues. First bar, I mean first four bars are going to be G. Next four bars, two of C, two of G. Last four bars, one of D, one of C, and one of G. I know what you're thinking. I'm, I'm a bar short. That's where what we have, a, what we call a turnaround goes. So right here, we're going to go one, two, three, four, one. And we're going to go G, C, C sharp, G. So it's going to go. So G, C. Start. That's a mouthful. Okay, so this is how the whole thing's going to sound. One, uh, I'm, I'm going to do the whole 12 bar blues without stopping. One, two, one, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four. Second bar, two, three, four. Third bar, two. That's where your first finger go. One, two, three. Slide down. One, two, three, four. Now G. One, two, three, four. Turn around. One, two, three, four. That is your 12 bar blues. Um, break it down into sections into the two ways that to practice going back and forth between G and C, and then practice that. Those are the two hard parts. So there's your 12 bar blues.